Yay, recording is in progress. Well, it's nice been, one, I looked back at my uh, history and we have not chatted for a year and four or five months. It's been that, it's been that long. long. Wow. Oh, yeah. I know. That's funny. And a, a lot has gone on in the world. <laughs> <laughs> right. and, For sure. And a lot is going to continue to happen in the world as um as this new situation kind of starts to evolve as humanity evolves. So something to talk about things to talk about I, i'm so interested to hear your point of view of this because um yeah i'm interested in your point of view i tend to be of the ilk that um i mean there's a lot of conspiracy theories and stuff which oftentimes turn out to be true and so i'm kind of in that side of things i guess with a lot of this stuff on the true side of the conspiracy theories um but uh yeah, yeah. But also in its uh, in its um, impact and interaction with um, consciousness generally yeah. and spirituality, because it all seems, uh, yeah, there's a singularity in in coming, right? Well, I don't know if I would describe it as a singularity, many people do. And I know that that's a common, right. uh, a common thought line or that goes through uh, the thing, but there's from my perspective and what I can perceive at this moment, man seems to be on the cusp of an evolutionary step where we're about to um, destroy the world as we know it. <laughs> and from the, the ashes of that destruction, will we will clear away uh, the and we will be forced to seek a new way of being. And that we, we have given away, humanity has given away its sovereignty. We have outsourced our knowing and trusted institutions, governments, so-called experts and we have moved away from trusting our own inner knowing how we as a human uh know the truth the truth of ourselves the truth of the situations that we are going through and that and as a result of giving away and trusting uh, these institutions, these institutions have been self-serving and not had our, our humanity's personal best interests at in and heart. And therefore, we have been lied to. We have not been told the whole truth on many subjects, but mainly we have not been told the whole truth about our nature. Let's live in a call. And you, you in your explorations through ayahuasca magic and your consciousness studies are come to experience that, you know, through your kundalini awakening and, and your various meditation practices you're beginning to access those different states that for the majority of people are denied even ex that they even exist or when they acknowledge that they exist they say that they're fake they're not real you know they're, they're discounted and dismissed 
as not being legitimate forms of knowing. <laughs> and this is this is handicapped humanity. And it's time for us to start taking that sort of power back. And, and, it, and with that <laughs> comes great personal responsibility. Uh, we must take responsibility for our own lives back away from the institutions and, and ideas that we trusted. And, you know, that's starting to happen. Uh, people are starting to recognize, wait, this isn't right, you know? And suddenly you feel like you're in the Wizard of Oz. Imagine this. The Wizard of Oz came out in 1939. And Dorothy, the Tin Man, the Cowardly Lion, and the Straw Man went to visit the wizard in the Emerald City. And they went to this wizard and they saw a light and flashing things in a booming voice. And little Toto goes and pulls the curtain back and reveals this old tottering man who's doing all the levers and, and ignore that old man over there. Look at me, I'm real. You know, and the big flames go up. And um, it, to a certain extent, that big flaming projection that they were originally seeing is what we've been seeing. Governments have only shown us part of that that particular face, but there's agents, if you will, behind that, like the man behind the curtain. And the man behind the curtain, once he's discovered, he has to confess, oh yeah, well, if you want to get back to Kansas, Dorothy, here's all you have to do. <laughs> you know, uh, just tap your emerald slippers together and you get to go back. I want to go home. Hmm. And you will. And, you know, and really in the metaphor for going home is for humans to return to self. This sense this inner knowing and this inner connection with the consciousness and the source that brought this physical being forth. And we're disconnected from that. And the reason is, is because it serves the people in power <laughs> for us not to be connected to that, not to recognize that. And but people are starting to get wise. Something's wrong here. We're not being right. told the whole story, you know. <laughs> anyway. So I think as people start to come to recognize this and things start to come out, you know, it's going to uh, shift. Plus there's other factors at play, you know, which you can... Many people can start to do some research and, and start to recognize what's going on. Yeah, I think you're right. There's there's a lot of this, um, what appears as, I mean, I think what you just set up there is there's like a, there's just a sort of a revelation. There's like a, some kind of transformative process. But then at the same time, there's this sort of um, sensation of returning to like the self and this kind of stuff. And, you know, I think uh, that seems pretty accurate. I think there's a lot of, like, uh, uh, there's a lot of stuff there. What it seems to me is the self, like the, which a lot of people think emerges from the heart, right? The, that self, unlike our world, is not changing, right? It's just, it's just a constant emanation of, um uh, well, I think what Ajashanti says, it's a, it's a constant emanation of life, right? Mm -hmm. It's just this constant emanation of life. And then somewhere somewhere after the, uh, after the sort of sound barrier of that life, that's where the mind picks up. 
right? And it's like, oh, it's, there's a transformation. There's like, uh, we've got to right? write it. starts interpretation. It starts the interpretation of this life force, right? And that's where all the problems start, man, right? Well, like the the part. Yes and no. There, people have a kind of a mis uh, understanding from my perspective, and I'm not going to tell people that their viewpoints are wrong because that's their viewpoint and they're welcome to them. I'm only offering my thoughts. So, and if they resonate with someone, then they they're free to to take them and explore them in greater depth and come to know them if that it works for them and if it becomes a foundation that where they can stabilize their consciousness and truly be in this world so yeah there's this source of living intelligence or living energy consciousness unconditioned consciousness from which we our deepest and truest self emanates and this consciousness is not limited in any way and but the mind uh can recognize that consciousness it can it can start to perceive it the heart can also perceive that consciousness but it, it perceives it in a different way than the mind does um, and it can recognize its presence and it can seek to express that and we call that love but that's simply an expression of our very essence of who we really are when we love. And sometimes then there's a then there's an another layer that goes on. Okay. But the mind at an unconditioned level is simply used for two things. One is to perceive which is to be aware. And the second thing is to imagine. And to, to imagine a world and a life of what they like to create. And so imagination is not, is a, a, a starting point for creation. And so that's really what the mind is for. Now, there's another layer out from that from imagination and perception called thought <laughs> and ideas and that layer out is manipulated in our world and certain people will give you this idea we, we, we sometimes call them beliefs um, but there's also a way to directly know reality and, and that's what perception is perception is a more essential way to come to know something it's because you perceive it you're you're in a direct relationship with it um and it's beyond argument there is no arguing the particular point uh there's complete certainty but anytime there's doubt about the thing, you're you're a layer out. You're you're over in thought. You're in reasoning, which is a lesser form of the mind. And uh, that's what that's where most people spend most of their life yeah. is out there in that lesser form of the mind, and they're not in the primary the more basic forms of imagination and direct perception. And that's 
that's where most of the problems arise is out here. And if you return to this more basic aspect, many of the problems start to disappear. <laughs> but um, yeah, I think what you're saying though is the um, is right. If you have the experience of the the pure awareness, yeah. it's like you said, it can be argued with. The problem is, as you also mentioned, is you know ninety percent of people don't. It seems implausible that that would be possible, and so. While it's not arguable that it's true, it's essentially you have to argue it because nobody believes it, right? Nobody well, believes that anything that amazing could be true. And it's more amazing than that. But it's like, how do well, you explain? Well, see, well, and that's the point. Okay, when you're out there arguing, you're out beyond the direct experience. What you what anyone has to do, you cannot, you can only use words. Okay, so I'm right now, where am I on this thing? I'm out here in thoughts and words, and that's ideas and beliefs. Okay. And so I'm saying, look, there's this idea of directly perceiving something. It's over here. <laughs> you have to penetrate over here but i can't do it with my words you yeah. scott turner has to go there yourself and there are powers that be that that exist over here that want to deny that this exists <laughs> that yeah. don't want you to know about it and say oh you're one of the crazies <laughs> you know so they keep you in this prison and there's this wall literally that that our mind kind of creates that sometimes doesn't allow us to get through in fact i wonder if i have that there's a great piece of art let me see if i can uh, you won't you won't be able to see it here i'll i'll share the screen let me see if i can okay find my pictures and screenshots and photos and let me put them up here and where is oh it's a very famous art piece ah here it is aha Okay, let me, here, I'm going to do that. Okay, I will do this screen share. Here we go. Here's a picture, okay? Uh, yeah, yeah. This is a very famous artwork. And everything, if you follow my cursor, Everything here is the world of beliefs, thoughts, ideas. But once you push your head through, this is out there in that part of the mind and the, the world of per direct perception. This is the uh, imagination. And, and this is where creation exists. And this is, this is the manifest world. You Before... Anything that you manifest over here is created out here in the imagination. And so that's kind of a pictorial. It's a very famous uh, illustration. I think it was done back in the 1700s or 1600s. And um, it's a great image that explains how reality actually works. And the idea is to poke your head through that barrier out there and look directly, perceive directly, recognize the, the ideas and images that you're going to create and you create them out there and then you manifest them here. And of course you manifest them through your mind partly but also through believing that they're they're real they're, they are 
real out there. You just haven't made them, brought them real here. And that takes us a certain process to do. So. Anyway. I think there's, um, yeah. I mean, this is kind of, I'm not an expert in this stuff, but like uh, Plato was talking about this stuff. Like I was doing some reading of the Republic and he's got a whole chapter in there about the, about the farms and, and the, and the, the funny thing is, is like you're saying, I mean, there's this, uh, there's this divide, which is difficult to cross. And it's difficult to tell people who are so stimulated with their, um, you know, your hormones are stimulated by advertising and serotonin and all this stuff. Oh, it's God. difficult to say, listen, the real juice is if you can focus on the breath, because it's like, shut up. And, you know, the whole oh, industry we've got, like, like I've been yeah. looking for new earbuds. And it's like, uh, it's because because I can't not have headphones in, right? It's ridiculous, right? Is we must have sensory, uh, we call it like, a, you know, a, a listening pleasure. But it's just, it's basically orienting your mind digitally. Same thing with the, the cell phones and everything else. So there's a whole, how could it possibly be that sitting peacefully would actually result in anything? And so this is probably why things like... Um, Neo Tantra, uh, which is like the sexual aspect Jivity talks about, or psychedelics have become so popular because in one quick night, you can yeah. be woken up rather than having like, because, you know, I meditated for a long time and I never, nothing ever happened. You know, I'd be sitting there like, this is really boring. And I'd, I'd be like, how much time do I have to do this? Like 10 more minutes? This sucks. Because I didn't <laughs> understand it. It was so... Yeah. It, it, just, it was so esoteric and it's like this doesn't work it can't this is all nonsense right yeah and, and so there's this process of like um convincing people or convincing the mind that it's that there's value in allowing a different perception it's crazy man it's really crazy well and that's what the what i would characterized and called the machine has done is the machine has distracted us and, and for the machine if you want to get an image of the machine go back to the wizard of oz and and the big guy up on the screen with the flames going up and that projection that's the machine and the machine wants to distract us. It wants us to uh, become excited so that we can't quiet our mind. And that's the only way that we can gain access to that beyond the border is to quiet what's going on here so that all of a sudden your mind slips out there because that's the mind's natural home. That's where the mind really belongs. That's where the mind wants naturally wants to go there. But it can't as long as you're, oh, the daily thing. I have to get to work. I have to get this thing out. You know, I've got this project. Oh, I'd rather watch a movie. Oh, I want to have sex. God knows I want to have sex too, you know. But anyway. You know, there's all of these sorts of um, distractions that we create that keep our mind occupied with this. What what uh, what's the Hindu name for it? Maya. You know. Maya. You know, the illusions, but really, the 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 Maya is nothing other than the manifestation of that area that that lies beyond the border out here and but it's filtered through all of your conditioning all the 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 thoughts and things that you all the beliefs <laughs> that are oftentimes other people's beliefs you you don't really know how to create your own beliefs free from other people's beliefs so just thoughts 
Yeah, it's interesting. Um, the machine, the um, mm -hmm. there's um, where am I going to go with this? There's some. It's, it's just an interesting the whole thing. There's a bunch. Of, I'll tell you one of the things I've been doing lately. This is a this is slightly off topic, but it'll, hopefully I'll pull it back in. Is the um, for the last nine months or so. I've been yeah. doing like astral projection kind of stuff, right? Oh, so cool. going through like, and I, you know, I think from during meditation, um, there are basically lots of different doors into the astral world. But I think previously I was doing it through meditation, but I wasn't really comfortable doing the, for, like what I call formal astral projection, where there's kind of like the Robert Monroe way of doing it, you know? Yeah, yeah. Um, but, um so like so that was what I really wanted to do. So I, I you know I spent a lot of money in a course last year to, to from some guy uh, who claims he's a guru. And I, you know I didn't I didn't really like the course that much, but I actually had success with the formal the yeah. formal stuff. And I gotta tell you, dude, it was completely and utterly astonishing, uh, mind blowing. It still blows my mind now. But what's interesting about it um, is there's well, this. Uh, you you know, uh, I I don't mean to interrupt, and, and I'm yeah. not. I'm just going. I'm going to point out a parallel. If you go take ayahuasca, or you take yeah. San Pedro, or LSD, in essence, you're getting a chemically induced astral projection. You know, definitely very so, advanced, a very advanced astral projection of that. Yeah, yeah. So essentially, they're both the same, you know, th there isn't a difference. And, and, and so, it, or pardon me, there isn't a difference in my mind. Some other people will go, no, there's a huge difference. Okay. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And I'm fine with that. But I think it's actually good that you develop the skill. Yes to do the astral projection the way that you have because when if you do go back to let's say the ayahuasca it will i think doing it here will help enhance over here and i think this over here will enhance this too so the two of them can kind of work in parallel but anyway Proceed I think your... part, I think part of it part of it is that when you do something like ayahuasca, it's an ex, it's a very 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 advanced astral projection, and what's yeah. interesting about it is, uh, uh, astral traditional astral projection is interesting in the sense that it's such a soft entry point, and because it's so soft, it gives you awareness over the process, um, whereas a lot of times with ayahuasca, you might be catapulted into, yeah mind-blowing awareness that you actually missed how did that just happen like what yeah. was what yeah. was the actual yeah. process yeah and so what, what astonished me the first time was just this idea that um and it's actually it's interesting like so one of the things people say is that you um that you might imagine the astral body like well and so usually people say well it's just like a it's like a transpersion transparent version of yourself like outside of yourself and it's like what but what was interesting about that, and I've done it a bunch of different ways now, but what's interesting about it is the the imagination, yeah. the actual the actual image, the imaginative image, which is just yeah. like something which you normally think, oh, okay, yeah. it's a it's a Ferrari, it's something else. You just all these little images go through your head as an elephant, la da da da. So you choose one of these things. But what happens with the actual projection is for one moment your awareness the source awareness moves into this transparent dot a two-dimensional image which you've imagined and it becomes real yeah it becomes real because of the awareness right yeah. it's yeah. that yeah. that was that just blew my mind and i've done a lot of the astral stuff during meditation but that that is mind-blowing and yeah. um and the, and this whole thing about where we focus our attention is yeah. what creates reality has got me wondering. This is the thing because you see a lot of people say, "Well, the world's a reflection of who you are," right? So you're thinking, "Well, what? What? My? Uh, I'm I'm a genocide in Gaza. I'm like uh, I'm like the war in Ukraine. Like uh, I'm a um, tr uh, I'm a transgendered athlete. Is that? Am I, am I all these things? 
Well, where's all the stuff? Is that how big the emanation is? How big is the emanation from the individual into the into into physical reality? I'm not really sure, but that was a pretty interesting moment there of the because if it's a machine, it's such a subtle and delicate machine that we that's why we don't notice it because it's so the machinery is is a diaphanous diaphanous i'm using my english lit words here it's a diaphanous machinery right haven't used that word in a while um again let me stop you for just a second and and so that we'll we'll we can we'll resume from the diaphanous machine yeah the the thing about let's say the war in ukraine or transgender or the war in in that is an eruption of the neurosis of the unconscious humanity the collective okay and and oftentimes the wars in um wars like say in ukraine or in gaza are manufactured events and they're manufactured in by the machine to distract humanity, the collective consciousness of all people, away from attending to the center, attending to self, and and searching here. Because if you're distracted, if you're fearful, if you have any fear or anxiety, then it's difficult to attend to and do an astral projection. And you know that from your own meditation. As you're laying down there uh, or sitting there, however you choose to, to meditate, and you close your eyes and you take your deep breath, and the next thing you thought that comes into your mind is, damn, I've got to do this shit. Oh, that thought of when I did that, (laughs) you start to cringe. And all these thoughts come in and start to take over. I want peace. (laughs) You know, I want to think of nothing. (laughs) Right. But all these thoughts start to penetrate. And that's on, uh, that's a reflection. You have to clear all that stuff out and give it the attention that it's due and then let it go. And so that you can reach that point, but you can't do that. That's why the machine creates wars is so that you'll, it'll have something that will act as a barrier between you and inner peace. And it makes it more difficult for you to meditate, to, to, to calm down, to find that center. And once people, awaken to that they'll go you know i know about that but i'm not going to engage that energy because that energy is of a lower vibration the vibration of war the vibration of fear is a lower vibration on the consciousness scale and the result is is that you're going to be stuck. The more attention you give to these lower vibrational events, you're going to become and harmonize and start to resonate at that consciousness level. So you have to shift your attention and your awareness to different levels on the spectrum from fear or from anxiety to something like, you know, the possibility of, let's say, joy or the possibility of appreciation, gratitude, you know, for the small things that you have. But anyway, let's return to the diaphanous, (laughs) did I say it right? Uh, I guess diaphanous sounds right, yeah. Um... Yeah, you know, you see a lot of people on YouTube talking about astral projection, how cool it is, or whatever. And you know, it's actually my first experience was like it was like was like uh, 
and I get this from meditation, but it's it, it was it was quite different, like actually leaving the body, because you get this feeling. It's like because you, one, you're not in your sort of home base, but when you actually leave the body. It's there's a real vibe of sacredness. Yeah. Like this is like this is not even there's just no screwing around here. And you know, I saw one guy years ago who was saying, you know, he'd met demons because when he'd been astral projecting, he was going to see girls and then he was trying to figure out the bank safe's uh code so he could steal money. And then one night demons came and took him to hell. Right. And so I always remember that. Just I always remember that and just say, behave, be on your best behavior, you know? And so but for me, it wasn't that hard because when it actually happened, I mean, the the sense of hugeness of the, and there is a sense that, oh man, this is like something maybe humans shouldn't be doing because it's like, it's too sacred. Like, wow. Um, but, um, yeah. but, but I think the thing is, is that what I tend to do is like, uh, even projecting, even if I, even if I'm leaving the body, I don't actually do much traveling around. A lot of times what I'll do is I'm use, I, it's almost like just achieving a higher state of consciousness. And yeah. then I'll just go into like meditation uh, yeah. or prayer or something like that. And also like, yeah. you're, like you were just saying, this whole idea of joy and gratitude, those yeah. words, there are certain words we use which don't have much cachet in the modern yeah. world, like uh, gratitude or uh morality it's like oh it's just boring i don't i don't want to take a, i don't want to know about morality and ethics i mean let me find out about something really interesting but those are when properly understood those are the real jewels yeah. right the real jewel well i found which is funny because you know when i started like getting these spiritual experiences you know like i was i was like okay this is about magic it's about magic then okay and so I was trying to understand what magic was, but what was what was really interesting about it is, uh, you know, if you read any of the literature of the uh, like the Tibetan stuff or whatever, I mean, they, they're always talking about the jewel of consciousness, and you're like, yeah, what what does that mean? But what yeah. it means is is that when you start moving into states of mind uh, mm -hmm. premised upon joy and um, goodness. All wow. of a sudden, conscious, it's almost like it's almost like the crystallization of a snowflake. It just all of a sudden beauty emerges. And yeah. it's like uh it's these underlying principles which we don't value at all. You know, I was scrolling through Facebook the other day and it was just it's just shocking amounts of like people posting horror movies and it's all these things which which scare the primal emotions, but nobody, you know, if you have a movie. It's almost like the Waltons, you know, people you would laugh like at that show, the Waltons, because they're such goody goodies. But mm -hmm. those un those fundamental principles, which um, mm -hmm. they 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 have a they they have a radiation to them, like when you're good to somebody, when you actually when you actually express goodness to somebody, even you know, even if you're having a bad day and you just try and be good, that that radiation, it's a radiation. It's a force more, and it's funny because you know I, I wasn't. Yeah, I wasn't looking for this. I was really surprised when I discovered this stuff about wow, goodness is where it's at, right? Because I was thinking maybe magic. So maybe that's interesting. You can you can like manifest and do. You can have spells and smite your enemies or whatever. And it's actually no, just focusing yeah. on this goodness and that. And and what's funny is I started seeing that sort of crystallinity, the sort of crystallized form of consciousness. And so, in a way, like it's like I was saying earlier, how do you actually teach people about this? Because you can't convince people to to uh, to focus their awareness on their breath. But you know, no, I think, actually, I think you can. I think yeah? the the breath is a doorway into the present moment. And have you heard of the presence process? <laughs> I know it very well. I've done uh, it three times. Around. Yeah. Yeah. I am here now in this. Now in this. And, and that is the um, kind of the breath way to enter the present moment. And as you practice that, you can't force it, okay? You, you, you really need to do that. But as you become present, 
then you, you're, you're doing what I was talking about is stilling the mind. The mind starts to recede. Now, there's another way to do that. And, and oftentimes people just focus on the breath, but there's additional ways to kind of supercharge this. And I think I did this, mm, here, hang on. I, want, I apologize. I want to take this out because I can talk easier. You will see a, oh. a whole, I, I'm having an implant done here. The tooth just kind of fell apart. So they apparently pulled, that's the new chic. That's the new chic with the models in Italy, you know, have a big gap in the teeth, you know. Oh, really? So you're actually, no. Yeah, you're just I'm very gonna attractive. Have, I'm, I'm going to have it uh, <laughs> fixed up. So, but anyway, nice. um, but I can talk my, I, it's easier for me to talk. So yep. I think I've done this before. Place. There's a truck going by outside. Uh, I'm going to wait for it to pass. There we go. Place your awareness in your hands. Yeah. yeah. And, and what do you sense? And just become aware of that. Yeah. Now, move your awareness down your arms or up your arms, through your shoulders, down your trunk, up to your head, and feel the same, whatever it is, sensation, vibration. Some people call it energy. Some people call it vibration. Some describe it as a numbness, whatever your personal description is. Feel that all over your body as you place your awareness in your body. Now, anchor your awareness right here in your solar plexus or your sternum, kind of in there. And notice the same sensation. Now, I want to ask you to divide your awareness not only keep your awareness on your entire body, but also kind of a, a part of it, a focus of it right here in your solar plexus. Now, when you do the I am here now breath, that is part of the presence process, that will supercharge your building of presence. And from this point, as you're holding your awareness right here in your solar plex sternum area, you're going to be able to observe your conscious mind. You're going to be able to start because becoming aware of the energy, the awareness, when you place your awareness in your hands, you're becoming aware of your real self. The energy, the consciousness from which you emerge and create that creates this reality that created this body, created creates and maintains this body, when you place your awareness here, you're accessing that source energy. It's unconditioned. It's, you know, when we started the conversation with there's this source consciousness that just emits, okay, that that's that's doing there there's no thoughts there's no anything it's just pure consciousness well when you place your awareness here and you're aware of that you're immediately connected to that source energy that source consciousness from which everyone shares everyone has access to it because yep. you are it <laughs> and so when you want to use your breath as a a doorway if you will you're using it to access that present that energy that consciousness that is always present and so this uh, the addition of this with the breath work and doing that I am here now kind of mantra that that Michael does is like putting that breath work on steroids. And I mean, and steroids is a negative term. 
it's it's like <laughs> supercharging it yeah um, it, it it's it's a way to enhance the experience deepen and enhance the experience of of the present moment because really what the when and the other thing is is as you do this as you place your awareness here you're also going to observe one thing your thoughts go away <laughs> suddenly you're draining all of the the egoic thoughts that are chattering away when you're trying to meditate you know you're laying there damn it i don't want to talk about you know my ex-wife that bitch you know <laughs> <laughs> you know <laughs> that kind of goes away yeah and all that exists there when you're holding your awareness there is you start to recognize there's nothing but consciousness. It doesn't have any content. It, it It's consciousness. Yeah. Anyway. It's Jesus. interesting. There's, there's a practice I was going back to recently, um, yeah. which I read years and years ago. But it's interesting because what we're doing here is we're doing this placement of consciousness in the hands. And there's an interesting alternative practice, which is is basically tantric in origin, I guess. So there's a practice which has got many aspects to it called Buddha Shuddhi, which is kind of like uh, becoming aware of the, the classical elements. But one of the interesting ways of doing this, which I always found really hard, is like you start focusing on an imaginative figure in your mind. And so yeah. the idea is you got to focus on the imagination. So one of the first ones is like, for example, you might focus on a yellow square, which represents the earth element. So if you think about a yellow square and the same thing happens, it's like, no, no, think about your ex, right? Or think whatever it is, right? And so all these things, too, I can't think about the elements, you know, I'm going to think about, um, you know, but one of the things, one of the things I discovered, and it's, it's uh, analogous to what you're doing there with the hands is. One of the one of the cool things about uh, focusing awareness in the fingers and then the hands and the arms is it's almost like it's a it's almost like a moving meditation and because yeah. it's moving because it's active it keeps the the monkey mind occupied but you're yeah. still focused you're still yeah. focused yeah. and so what I discovered when I was focusing on the tattvas which are the symbols for the the elements was that instead of just trying to visualize a yellow square. I would visualize the yellow square as if I was Brian De Palma, the director who is famous for his amazing camera movements. And so yeah. what I do is I zoom in to one of the corners, right? And I'd visualize it as, oh, wow, it's incredibly detailed, high resolution, pull out a little bit, then start moving along. I'm still focused on the yellow square, but yeah. I'm doing it in a moving sense. And then what happened is, is, as I did this, this was actually when I had my first major actual experience about six years ago is all of a sudden as I was doing this, there was a practice which you were supposed to imagine touching touching one of these figures and imagining a, te a texture, and I could feel it. Yeah. And all this happened because I wasn't a good meditator, but once you realize that, listen, allow the mind, use the power of the mind. The, the, the mind is, that if it's in motion, use the motion to your advantage right so you allow it to roam and you focus it through a sort of lens of like okay you're a camera guy for this idea right and i've done the same thing also one of this is actually quite interesting i did the same thing um i had an experience where where i was meditating and the virgin mary of all people like emerged and i don't really think of my i'm not catholic and i certainly haven't thought about the virgin mary before but it was such an astoundingly beautiful experience and then since then, I actually bought, I actually, you can't see it now with the blur. There's a, I actually bought a huge statue of the Virgin Mary for the house. But like, um, but part yeah. of that is one of, the, one, of the, one of the ways I found of like evoking was doing that. I would just come up with like a, an image in my mind, like one of those cliche images of the Virgin Mary with yeah. the baby Jesus. Yeah. But then I'd start, I'd start moving like Brian De Palma around yeah. the outline and the surface. And then what is the flesh like? How is our skin? Yeah. And then... And then as you do this, you allow your mind to move into the, well, you start becoming a bit more, well, you know, the, why am I even thinking about the Virgin Mary? Like, why am yeah. I doing this? And then you're like, well, uh, people say that she, uh, she, uh, the fruit of her womb was the son of God or whatever. Right. And so you allow, yeah. but all of a sudden is these ideas 
what yeah. happens is the whole thing starts coalescing in like uh in like yeah. a in what's the word in a a crucible yeah. yeah but it all starts with your little exercise there that exercise with the fingers is really important yeah right well you know the exercise that you did with the yellow square again yeah. Your that's an exercise we talked earlier about pure consciousness being the 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 primary what happened oh <laughs> that was yeah, amazing I got, i've got to lower that yeah amazing I, you put I your have, hand up it went on hey listen <laughs> watch this okay Right. Hey. <laughs> okay, that's more impressive. Uh, yeah, the, I right? think there's something else. If I do this, I, it, it does oh, something. Oh, does it Sometimes respond to hand? There handlers? are certain hand gestures that you do, and like and on it, Zoom. Yeah, and really it, the thing I've got to turn the feature off. Yeah, there you go. Do it. Uh, maybe it's not on. I've never seen that before. That's amazing. It actually works on hand gestures. Wow. Yeah. Right? I, That's do the, you have uh, a Mac there? A what? Do you have a Mac? No. No, I'm not. Okay. All right. It, 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 it prob I think it only works Mac for thing. Mac. Yeah. Anyway. Gotcha. So where <laughs> was I? <laughs> oh, so we were talking about primary con consciousness unconditioned consciousness pure consciousness which has no content pure consciousness has no content it's simply awareness yeah and then from that come items uh, emerges the mind and the heart also emerges from there which is emotional center and and what as it filters farther down but it comes out of pure consciousness as love. Okay. Uh, so there's mind. And one of the, 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 the primary function of the mind is imagination to, to image things and to perceive. So the two are related. You, you have to perceive, you know, uh the image <laughs> so that it's natural that the two would be working together and so when you were conceiving of that yellow square you were in that part of the mind and it's to a certain extent it's it's beyond filled it's beyond conditioning okay uh and it, it's simply an awareness of an object. So there's the perception, perception of the object, and then there's the, which, which is the perceiving part, and then there's the object part, the yellow square. And, and by perceive, creating these objects up here, that's, uh, or imagining them, that's the primary building block for the next stage. And then the next stage out beyond that is manifest reality, where we, you know, we, we are kind of here with this body, such as it is. <laughs> We're here... And, but also in manifest reality are thoughts and and feelings and beliefs and ideas that exist out here. Now the question is, are they your thoughts or are they someone else's thoughts? You know, sort of a thing. But when you're doing that with the yellow square and you're touching it, you're in that primary area of the mind. And that's a that's a useful to be able to recognize and to be able to discern those differences. And when you said it was real, that's actually reality. 
So the fact that you can recognize it, the manifest part, this isn't real. It's, it, it's real in a sense, but as the Hindus would say, anything that is not permanent is an illusion. It comes, it. it goes, all right? Yeah. So your body, to a certain extent, is an illusion. Well, what's real? What will never go? The consciousness, yeah. the, the energy in your hands that you sense, that's the consciousness that created this body. That never goes. Yeah. When you die, the body disappears. It, it, the, the, the body is like this shirt. I take it off, I throw it away. But the self behind the body will continue to go on. You've had many lifetimes. You're just simply not aware of them. You've lost access to them. Some people retain access to them. Um, there's an interesting guy still reading the book a walk in the physical by Kristen Sundberg I it's think you that. might be able to I don't know is, is this backwards or can you read it I can see it I can see it okay he, he taught he can remember prior lives certain wow. people can do that that's kind of like next level astral projection yeah is to go back and visit your your prior lives but the uh but again so the, that's the permanent part the primary the real but the body it's it's real yeah you touch it you know you put a gun to your head you're going to die you know the body that that will disappear uh so in a sense in this reality construct it's real at this level but because it disappears and it falls away it's not permanent forever it it is to a certain extent a temporary creation and the real focus should always be on permanent creations you know i think what's interesting is you know like the the last time i saw a dead person i think it was my ex's grandma but what's always astonishing about it and you know like where i live here people often dump dogs and stuff and they'll end up dying so you'll see the cadavers and stuff but what's amazing about it is how animated a human being actually is like yeah. micro the micro um gestures and and expressions and movements yeah. which define the personality and all of it is gone. And most of those expressions are not, they've got nothing to do with your intention or yeah. what you're trying to do. It's all, it's all coming from somewhere else. And then that's what makes it so creepy in a way. It's like all of a sudden it's just, there's nothing there. There's just this, there's just this body. And this is one of the problems in our society, I guess, is we're so separated from the death process because that the confrontation yeah. with the death is what actually allows us to, yeah to contemplate like what is this actually i mean how is that how is it that this my ex's grandmother was this very thin extremely thin woman and so she died and it was just this like it was like a it's kind of like you know it's funny if you've ever been to like uh, any of those um french or italian museums where they have those perfect like sculptures with the with the veils and it's yeah. so real it's so realistic it's weird because yeah. it looks like a real part you're like you want to touch it, but it just feels like what is it? It feels like there's a soul there or something. Like, what is going on? Um, and the same thing happens is this architect, the architecture of the human body, which is interesting because we don't I don't know about you, but I mean, most of us don't appreciate the the sort of divine architecture, you know. Yeah. Like I'll I, like I certainly, if I'm drinking beer, I'm not thinking about the divine architecture of my body, you know. It's like, no, you know, you're 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 lost in like low vibrational thoughts about unworthiness or whatever it might be, you know, and yeah. um, sadly. Well, you know, you no, know, it's kind of interesting. When I get drunk using alcohol, 
one of the interesting things is that I observed early on is the same thing that you put here when you place your awareness here, the, the thoughts kind of drain away. At a certain point of being drunk, those thoughts kind of quiet. Yeah. And you start to, to, to access kind of those different things. Unfortunately, because of it, you also lose bodily control and function. But uh, uh, my father, who was a alcoholic for many years, I often thought that he used alcohol so that he could quiet the voices in his head. And, you know, the, all those little beliefs of saying, you're not good enough. You're, yeah. you're this, you're that, you know, and all those voices that destroy a, 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 a beingness. And so he, he retreated to alcohol to uh, uh, escape that voice because he had no access to meditation. It, it, yeah. he, he grew up in an age where that, that didn't exist and it was woo woo, you know. Well, in a way, the alcohol is just a presence process for people who don't have yeah. access, right? A lot because yeah. I certainly yeah. use it that way too. And um, oh, yeah. I was, I've been doing, I've been doing some reading in the last year or so about like, and you know, I was not into this stuff at all, but the whole childhood trauma thing and how yeah. people tend to use addictive yeah. uh, activities as a way, and they they talk about this in the presence process too, right? Is yeah. like the 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 uh, what happens is that the the uh the uh the pain the yeah. subconscious pain yeah. is ameliorated and so yeah. there's a sort of and so there's a sort of there's and so what ha this is something that happens with meditation is like when you get two when you get two ideas in meditation moving against each other there's a sort of ple if it's pleasurable it's and it's not it's not like a a sexual pleasure it's just it's just the sensuality of like recognizing two forms of consciousness touching each other and I think that's what happens with alcohol too. It's like the pain's there, and then it's like the bandage the of alcohol. It's like here it is, and that that is this pleasurable thing which people become, understandably, they, they end up liking it a lot. You know. Well, you know, there's um there's a, a saying that goes, uh, "Feel it to heal it," and uh, I'm gonna take that out again and feel okay. it. To heal it there it's it, it comes it sounds better or more clear in my head when i yeah. say it feel it to heal it so when you place your awareness in your body and and in your hands and and you're you're aware of that and then you allow a thought a painful memory to come up but you still holding your awareness in your body and so your awareness is kind of divided between the awareness in your body and the vibration that exists there. And then you bring in this thought, but you don't let the thought take over. You know, you don't, I, what is known as identify with it. You just simply hold and you don't identify by holding your awareness here and also holding your awareness here. And what ends up happening is, is you've given energy up here to this negative emotion. That contains a lot of the energy that you've given it over the years. The more you think about it, the more angrier you are, those emotional things. You're giving away your energy to this event, this person, this whatever. So as you're holding your awareness here in yourself, and then you're observing, you're observing this thought from here. You start to take back, you start to look at it. And that's that interaction that's that you're horrible. talking about. You drain and you take back the energy that you'd given away. And you're taking it back to here. And it's a way to diffuse that. And it's summarized in the, the feel in the saying, feel it to heal it. Well, it doesn't say what you're feeling. You're feeling yourself 
your unconditioned self and you're feeling this and you can actually feel the energy returning to here. And what you're doing is you're reclaiming yourself. You're, there are lots of terms for it. You're reclaiming yourself. You're becoming whole. You're gathering yourself together. All these terms essentially mean the same thing where you're, because when you give your energy to this event, this thought, you know, the ex-wife, the bitch, you know, you're giving your energy to that. And by taking it back here, you're reclaiming that. You're reclaiming yourself and you're becoming whole because when you gave it your energy away, you divided yourself. You divided your own house. And it's, it's, it's a simple process that anyone can do. And the more people do it, the more they start to reclaim their lives. And it's not taught. This isn't taught. It's, 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 it's almost hidden from society, but it's a natural way of, of doing it. Now, people can use a similar process through the presence process. Essentially, a presence process is exactly the same thing. In fact, it is. Um, taking ayahuasca is exactly the same thing where you look at it and you start to see it from different perspectives. And by seeing it from other perspectives, you're reclaiming your energy. You're reclaiming yourself because now it's not just one way. It's different ways. And you, you may even start to recognize your part of how you created this, you know? And you'll go, oh, fuck, I did that. Oh, and, and then they <laughs> reacted that way. Oh, you know, it's like the old Jimmy Buffett song where he goes through Margaritaville. And finally, at the last, well, it could have been my fault too, you know, sort of thing. <laughs> So, right. yeah. yeah, I think it's funny. I think I think uh, all those techniques you mentioned are really good, but they all suffer from the same problem is that they kind of only work with people who are ready to accept them, yeah. who are already yeah. looking for it. And one of the I think is interesting is um, yeah, I'm what I'm binge watching a British series on uh, it's not Netflix on some web page right now. My brother told me about it, and you know, I'm I'm Scottish, so I always like those British things. It's this show, Downton Abbey which is the story yeah. of a, an aristocratic family who loses all yeah, their money. Yeah. What's really interesting, what I noticed about it, though, is it's got the usual drama and stuff. But the one thing that's really interesting about that show is that there's the you know, a lot of shows, not that I watch that many, but they, they tend to, you can use all kinds of mechanism dramatically to, to engage. And what's really interesting about Downton Abbey is they always use kindness. It's yeah. always acts of kindness which do it and i think I'm, I'm just hypothesizing here but i think for people who are not ready to focus on the breath or to feel energy in their hands it's like how can you actually affect those people and i think the only way you can really do it which is appreciated by them and which they want more of is through actual just kindness like how can i become i know you i well from what i've heard you're you're quite a kind person i've heard things about you that you're always helping people and doing things for people which I find really impressive. Like you're not an egomaniac like I am. I'm like, wow, that guy, David Woods, like really got something going on there, man. Right. But, um, but those kind of acts, which are actually helping other people is how you, that's the real transmission, right? Yeah. The real transmission is kindness. Right. Yeah. And that's one of the things I show really represented that in some ways, but um, maybe yeah. that's one way of, passing that on to people is just through that well, invisible vibe let me suggest well i agree with you about the kindness thing now let's expand it that notion and the greatest kindness you can 
give to yourself and to humanity is to become whole, to reclaim all of those parts, to look at yourself. And, and trust me, this is not an easy process because you look at yourself. I, I have spent many a night at 3 a.m. doing exactly what I described and, and tears are coming down my eyes because I recognize not only the pain, but how big of a fucking fool I've been <laughs> and, how, and, and how I created that. I played a major part. I did this to myself yeah. sort of thing. And it's difficult to do. And because you have a tendency to get in the blame mode, it's their fault. You know, that so-and-so, you know, but that's, that's kind of a sign, but you, you take a step there and then you realize, oh, maybe I had some, you know, so, so you keep going at it. Sometimes you, you rarely do it just one go. I mean, it's like 10, 20 goes at this and, and you, you peel back a, a bigger layer, but here's my point. As you go through the, this process, your chain, this gets fed back into the collective human consciousness. And other people come to recognize it. And other people start to respond to it. It's really interesting to see what happens to people when you're no longer, when you start to become whole and you're not responding to them in those, with those old patterns. Um, it's getting close to here. What, what time is it? We've been doing this for about an hour and 20 minutes or so. Really? So I'll tell, you this, I'll tell you this last story. I was, I had gotten this job in, in San Diego and this guy was, um, he, he was an interesting character and he came into my office complaining and he had an appraisal report that I had done a review on and he started screaming at me. And this guy, I mean, he was really, he was really hot. And so I placed my awareness here all in my <laughs> body and I just sat there and I let him go. And finally, after three or four minutes of him just unloading every, all of his pent up anger and frustration, he stopped. Well, tell me about this. And I go, well, if this is incorrect, that means this number's wrong, which means that the appraisal's wrong. And if your client finds out about it, they're going to question it. And they're going to come back and go, what's wrong, which will waste more time and effort as you go through and correct it. And it will make you look bad. Is that what you want? Boom. Oh. No, <laughs> <laughs> I mean, his anger collapsed on itself and it was done because I was present with myself. I was whole. Yeah. I refused to engage his ego. I didn't engage his ego. I didn't start yelling back at him. I remained perfectly calm and centered in here. I, I remained in my heart center and it it completely he was totally deflated and he goes oh okay and he walked out and that's the power of these sorts of things once you come to experience and have a direct experience of them it's one thing to talk about them it's yeah. quite another to have an experience and you go oh that's how that works holy shit you know yeah. anyway yeah. totally it's interesting i would say that the uh i wonder 
like as a final thought, if that technique of moving into the heart center to to disarm arguments is, I mean, it, it's what's needed in the world. Everybody's trying to like provoke everybody into war. And yeah. it seems to me the thing to do is, is sit tight, don't be reactive. Yeah. Sit, sit and let people, like you said, just collapse on themselves with their anger. I think that's yeah. probably where we're heading. So, yeah. right. Well, there, we didn't talk about it. Hmm. Uh, and, and perhaps we can save that for another conversation. Sure. There are energies that are approaching our shores. There is an, a new set of energy that, that's coming through, and it will get through. And it's going to shift human consciousness. And we're going to, to be, you talk about, let's say, a war. What you're going to come to be able to do is you're going to be able to say there's this war out there in between the Jews and the Palestinians or the, pardon me, the Israelis and the Palestinians. Yeah. Okay. So the, the Israelis and the Palestinians are having a fight and you're going to observe how that creates that has a certain energy it has the energy of anger it has the energy of fear it has the energy of things and you're going to note that as you give yourself attention to that you're going to notice those those energies in yourself you're going to take on those energies and you're going to ask yourself do i want to feel that and you're going to go, no, I don't want to feel that. I want to feel kindness. I want to feel joy. I want to feel gratitude. So you're going to take your attention. Okay, that's the energy that's coming, emanating from the event that we call the Israeli-Palestinian conflict. That's the energy. So you're going to take your attention away from that. And when you do, your peace, inner peace, will return to you. Fear will go away, anxiety, anger, all of those things. But if you keep it there, then when you talk to your neighbor, you're going to talk to them with that energy in you. And that's going to create conflict and anxiety in your world. Even though that war exists out there, you're going to bring that energy into your world. And people are going to go, yeah. I don't want that. Yeah. And suddenly, the people, the manipulators, the creators of that war are going to go, this isn't working. This isn't working. And suddenly, wars are going to start to disappear. Why? Because people are refusing to engage in that. And that's how the world is going to change, but it will come in through this new resonance, this ability that is going to be forced on us. And as we push the, if we push it away, it will be more difficult. But trust me, all of us are going to go through it. And we're either going to go willingly <laughs> <laughs> or screaming. If we go willingly, if we start to be a, hold a certain level of awareness about this transformation of humanity, we'll be able to navigate through it uh, much better, or the individual will be. Eventually, the powers that be that have created this for millennia will lose their power. And they will retreat. And a new age will emerge in humanity where we live at those higher vibrations, the vibrations of kindness that you talked about, gratitude. We'll start playing and creating. I can do this yellow thing. Holy, 
fucking age. What Virgin Mary just showed up? Holy shit. You know, and we're going to go and and no one is gonna say that's not real. They're gonna say, How do I do that shit? Show me right. how you did that, you know. They're going to want the same thing. They're going to want to see the Virgin Mary. They're going to want to be in that space where they're that that reality is more real than this, because the and they'll start to reckon. Oh, this will go away, like my shirt. You know, it's something that at the when it gets old and ratty and too dirty, and hole gets in it. I'm going to throw it away and get a new shirt. Well, that's what you're going to do with your body, you know. And th then there's going to start becoming, oh, so what do I really want to do with this life? Do I want to spend my life worrying, anxious, in fear, scared, listening to other people's ideas about what I should do? Or do I want to explore these things? Do I want to see the Virgin Mary? Anyway, my friend. I think it'd be really good to have another chat maybe in a week or so where we talk about your ideas about the world, this transformation of human consciousness. I'm intrigued by that. Well, I would love to do that also. And we can do that. Um, you know. Anyway, here, I'll tell you what I am going to do.